Dispensationalism is a very important teaching because it shows that if you put verses at the right group of people and the right time period, you would realize that it would clear up so many contradicting doctrines and wrong doctrines. Amen. So dispensationalism, you have to divide verses. There's no doubt about it. You can't apply every verse to yourself. You have to divide a verse to a different time period or a different group of people or even both many times. Now a lot of people, they do not believe in that. They say that that is unbiblical. You're just picking and choosing verses, etc. But no, that's not true. Because Jesus Christ Himself gives a very good example right here. We're going to look at the book of Luke, chapter 4. And then it's going to be verses 17 through 21. You're going to notice right here that in this passage, Jesus Christ is quoting the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 2. But... What he does, does with verse 2 is that he divides it. So it's at A. He doesn't read the rest of verse 2. Why is that? Because you're going to see that it's at a different time period. Look at the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So he's quoting from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20, what does it say? And he closed the book. What did he say in verse 21? Verse 21, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Okay, so this is important. He's reading a passage at Isaiah, and then when he reads this particular passage, he says, this is fulfilled right now. Because this passage is a fulfillment of me right now as your Messiah in my first coming. Look at Isaiah 61. Verse 1. You notice that at verse 1, Jesus read all of that, right? Look at verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He did do that, right? But what did he do? Remember Luke? It says, and he closed the book. He stopped in the middle of verse 2. Why? Because from verse 1 all the way to the middle of verse 2, that was his first coming. That's why Jesus said this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. But divide from 2B, what is that, church? That's his second coming. Amen. Notice it talks about the day of vengeance of our God. That's the second coming. When he comes down on this world and gives vengeance upon the world. So you'll notice right here that there is definitely a division. Jesus Christ believed in dividing. Do you know how many years this is? Ever since Jesus' first coming to his second coming? It's been now more than what? Approximately 2,000 years or more. So you can read one verse. And half of it will be 2,000 years ago. The other half, 2,000 years later. Look at Genesis. Look at Genesis. Let me show you something even more weird. Look at Genesis 49. Genesis chapter 49. So people who do not believe in dispensationalism, oh, you shouldn't divide verses. Oh, you can't divide verses. They can't deny that Jesus himself divided the verse. And they cannot deny what he did was the truth. So Christians who do not believe in dispensationalism, you got to realize this, you're not really a Christian. Yep. Why is that? Because Jesus Christ, you're supposed to be a follower of Christ. Yes, that's what a Christian is, right? A follower of Christ. Amen. Jesus divided verses. You refuse to divide verses? You're not a follower of Christ. Amen. You're not a Christian then. Ooh, that will preach. Good. Look at Genesis 49, verse 11. This is so weird. Look at this. Genesis chapter 49 now. 
And we're going to look at verse 11. Look what this verse did. Binding his foal unto the vine. Okay, so who is this verse speaking about? Verse 10, you'll notice it's Jesus Christ, right? You'll notice in verse 10, that's Jesus Christ because of that capital S, Shiloh. So it's prophesying about Jesus. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice of vine. Remember, Jesus Christ was riding upon an ass, the colt. So this verse is a fulfillment of what? His first coming. Now, how do we know that's talking about his first coming? Because if you look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 5, we're not going to turn there, but you can turn there if you want. Matthew chapter 21, verse 5. Notice that verse says, this is a fulfillment of this. This is a fulfillment of this. So there's no doubt this is his first coming. But you're going to notice his second coming. Where? And he washed his garments in wine and is clothed in the blood of grapes. You know what that is? That's his second coming. So you notice again what? Divide. And then that one is referring to his second coming. Amen. How do we know that when he comes down, his garments dipped in wine's blood? How do we know that's the second coming? Because all you have to do is look at Revelation 19, which we won't turn to. So this is a fulfillment of Revelation 19, verses 13 and 15. Don't say, oh, no, 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 no. Look it up. Yeah. Look it up. Don't Amen. believe me. You look it up. All right? So you'll notice right here that there is a division, but the division, this is, look at this. This is so important. What divided verse 11a from 11b? It was a semicolon. Asses cult unto the choice of vine, semicolon. His garments dipped in blood. Look at this. So now a punctuation mark was a division. You know how many gap this semicolon gave? Approximately 2,000 years. A semicolon. Yep. A semicolon. That's good. And you don't believe in dividing verses? Come on. A semicolon gave this gap. Prophecy. Let's also look at Zechariah 9. Now this is even more weird. Zechariah chapter 9. Hey, didn't you know it can even go backwards? It can go backwards. So this is an off topic. That's why 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1, when it talks about the coming of the Lord and the gathering of the saints, two events. Coming of the Lord is second advent. Gathering of the saints is the rapture for Christians. But it's backwards. It's the rapture first for Christians, the coming of the Lord, that's after. Oh, no. Oh, you're just playing words and verses. No, you have to do that when you divide verses. You might say, that's not true. Well, there's a lot of verses, but I'm going to give you one. Here's just one. Look at Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9. We're going to look at verses 11 through 10. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no wa water. Notice right here, verse 11. Jesus Christ, it's talking about Jesus Christ, where he shed his blood. That's available today, yes? Amen. That's the blood that delivers us prisoners, yes? Yeah, yeah. Amen. So that's us today. Amen. But look at verse 10. I will cut off, so that's a future time period, the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Did that happen yet, where he was conquering all the world and ruling the world? No. no that's future. But that's at verse 10. 10 
you see Jesus Christ reigning on the earth. That's the 1,000 year millennium. Conquering the world. Right here, division. Right here, what do you see? Christians under the blood. What's first? Is it 10 or 11? In, in order of time periods. 11 is first, right? 10 is after. You have to go backwards. You think this is playing deliberately playing games? No, that's Scripture. Amen. That's Scripture. No one denies this. No one can deny this. You want me to show you even more? Now look at 9 through 11, okay? Look at verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh, so that's Jesus Christ, unto thee. He is just in having salvation, lowly, so in humility, not conquering king. And riding upon what? An ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. That's his first coming, right? Amen. Verse 9, you will see <clears throat> his first coming. What was verse 10? Verse 10 is millennium. Verse 11 was what? Christians. Does this look like it's in order here? <laughs> nope. So you see a sandwich. Now it's sandwiched. You know what you have to do now with this? When you divide? You divide and you have to put it at the right time period. So first coming here, this one is going to have to go here. This guy is going to have to go here. Oh, don't divide verses. That's not scriptural. If you don't divide, you're in trouble. You see that? That's right. That's right. You're not going to find the right time period, what doctrine is which and what. That's why verses, you have to divide what? In the right group of people, right time period. By doing that, you can divide and figure out, ah, so this goes here, this goes there. Right. That is biblical concept. Amen. So you'll notice that this one, so when you divide verses, sometimes punctuation mark can separate it. Sometimes one single verse can separate for 2,000 years. Sometimes verses, it can be sandwiched, and sometimes it can even go backwards. And you're telling me, don't divide verses? Huh? Of course you have to divide verses. Amen.